are joined right now by Dr. Eric Almi, the medical director from MedStar, the medical director of this race. And Doc, weather like this, I would think, is pretty ideal in terms of keeping people safe and, and not worrying about things like overheating. Yeah, this is perfect weather. We got overcast skies uh, and uh, humidity is probably the biggest factor today, but uh, it seems to be nice and cool right now, which is helpful. We visited with our colleague, Deb Wiener, and she was saying somewhat playfully when she made the turn for the finish line, she thought, oh, my knee, I could feel the knee. <laughs> realistically for runners as they push themselves and it's a push 26.2 or, or 10k 5k what's the red flag to know don't go any farther uh it's different for every runner but uh i think that if you are um i think it's just one of those things where if you are hitting a wall and you can't go any farther and you are either having you know problems with uh severe pain that you it's really probably not a good idea to keep pushing through that um, but uh, there's always going to be some degree of discomfort when you're running a marathon or distance like this and this is a cupless race this year which is different for a lot of runners used to have aid stations where they can grab a cup and go so there's a concern on either direction will they under drink the amount they need or over drink which both can lead to big health problems right you're absolutely right so one of the things we tell runners ahead of the race is to make sure you only drink to thirst it certainly is a challenge. I, I, uh, the runners, I'm sure, are prepared with how they're going to consume uh, uh, water throughout the race. That is, the, you know, new, a new thing to marathons to have to carry your own water bottle. But I think a lot of people do that during their training, and it's just a matter of, you know, you're just not going to have that. You're going to have to carry that weight with you. Right. Were there any other COVID concerns that you had to implement for this year's race that were never really a part of this this running festival in the past? So the water cups is one, but the other thing that we've been doing is sending out email blasts to get runners to, you know, that starting line, everyone's grouped together. So it's really hard to social distance when you're in that type of setting at the start of a race. So we've encouraged folks to mask up when they show up and hopefully some of them have done, have done that. I have seen people at the finish line putting their mask back on um, as an extra precaution. Now our leader, Jeremy Ardnoy, doesn't have to worry about social distancing. He's a minute or so ahead of the closest runner. Second place runner, Jordan Trofe, is running in three marathons in three days. What are the medical concerns he has to factor in in order to complete that unbelievably challenging cycle? I mean, I think every day he's gonna have to go through, after the, his marathons, he's gonna have to, you know, re-energize. He's gonna have to, you know, uh, um, check his nutrition and hydrate and all those all those things but I'm sure that he's been training for this for a very long time and he's he's got his his uh, system down and it's been months in the making for many of these runners so it's at the point now it's the celebration day they're getting to the race what do they need to do once they cr cross the finish line to make sure that their bodies can keep up with what they just accomplished yeah, yeah I mean I think the most important thing is they're gonna need to stretch out um, just get some rest uh, give some couple days off for the body afterwards before getting back into any exercise and uh, um, yeah that's the big thing stretching out because otherwise you're gonna get really tight and pay for it the next day. Dr. Eric Almey, MedStar Health, the race director, medical director, thanks so much for being with us today.